Good morning, grade fours, and welcome to another natural science lesson with me, Miss Kun. Remember, if you've got any questions, please email them to grade four at worksheetcloud.com. So as you can see, I am very chilly and I'm very cold today. The weather is rather fresh and crisp today um, here in Gating. So I hope wherever you are, you are warm and cozy and snug as a bug because I'm very cold. I feel like an Eskimo in my in my jacket. Um, but I won't lie, winter is not my favorite season. I prefer summer, but it's a personal preference. Okay, so boys and girls, the joke for today is how does a scientist have a fresh breath. How does a scientist have a fresh breath? Well, they eat experiments. Get it? Experiments, mints, experiments, experiments. <laughs> so the next time you eat a mint, you turn to your mom and dad or your brother and sister or your aunt or uncle or your granny or grandpa and you say to them, I am a scientist because I have a fresh breath I'm eating an experiment. <laughs> I'm sure they'll enjoy it. Okay, so grade four, today we are going to actually have a little bit of fun because we have learned about the moon and we have learned about the phases of the moon. We have learned about uh, the first landing on the moon. And today we are going to look at, and we're just going to read and enjoy different moon stories from around the world. And so in today's lesson, all you need to do is sit back, relax, and listen to me. I'm going to be a storyteller today. So that's all you need to do um, for today's particular lesson. So storytelling is a human tradition. And so through many different cultures around the world, storytelling is quite important and um, it's, it's very, very popular. And storytelling is used based on different objects or people or things or places. And it is a tradition. And these traditions usually are passed down from generation to generation. Now, when we talk about the moon, there are many stories about the shapes on the face of the moon, as there are cultures who have observed them. They often rotate uh, they sorry, they often relate moral tales or creation stories. So throughout time, there are different cultures and people around the world that look at the face of the moon. They look at the moon and they they create or they have these stories um, based on what they see in the moon. So just like boys and girls, if you are looking up at the sky and you're looking at the clouds in the sky. And when I was a little girl, I always used to lie in the grass and look at the clouds and I would try to imagine what do I see in the clouds? Do I see a rabbit? Do I see a person? Do I see a car? Do I? And you try to form sort of pictures or images by looking at the cloud. And so this is something very similar. Different cultures throughout the world and throughout time have created these stories as part of a tradition by looking at the moon and seeing what they see. And so today we're just going to go through a few of these different stories from places around the world. And they're very cool. Okay. So we're going to go on a little bit of a journey. So the very first place that we are going to look at is Peru. Where am I going to move myself? Let's move me here. Right. So we are going to look at Peru. And the story about the moon in Peru is called The Fox in the Moon. Okay. And I'm going to read and follow with me. Or you can read aloud as I'm reading. Um, it's completely up to you. All that fox could think about was getting to the moon. After braiding a grass rope long enough to reach the moon, he got help from the birds to fly it up to the moon for him. Once that was done, fox climbed up the rope. Now the birds say they can see fox in the full moon. Can you? Okay, so 
next time you look at the moon or you look at pictures of the moon do you see fox what do you see when you're looking at the face of the moon and so this is a story from peru and the, the culture of the people from peru um and they saw a fox in the moon let's look at another country what about from china and this story from china is called toad in the moon okay Heng O found out that her husband, Sheng Ai, had discovered the secret of immortality. Immortality, just so that you know, means that you can live forever. You're immortal, you don't die, you live forever. When she found his magic potion, she drank it and immediately flew out the window up to the moon. Sheng Ai was so angry with what she had done, he turned her into a three-legged toad. Can you see the toad in the face of the moon? Okay, very cute story. So the moment that they were able, they look at the moon and they see a three-legged toad. And that is the story behind where that three-legged toad came from. Um, and this is a story that has been passed down from generation to generation. And this is the story from China. Very cool. Okay, let's have a look at another one. <laughs> Right, so this story is from Scandinavia. I must say, when I sit and think of Scandinavia, because it's usually a quite a cold place. When you think of the Scandinavian countries during winter, um, it is very cold. So I think today I am dressed perfectly to go to Scandinavia. What do you think? Right, so this story is called Jack and Jill. Okay. Huiki, I've probably pronounced that incorrectly, and Bill. So those are Scandinavian names, but if they were translated, it would be Jack and Jill. Were sent up the hill to fetch a pail of water from a magical well. Water from this well inspired poetry and prophecy. The children were spotted by the man who carries the moon across the sky each night in his chariot. He scooped them up into his chariot and carried them away. The two children can still be seen there today, along with their bucket and pole. Can you find the splash from the spilt bucket? So this is one of my favorites actually, because um, by looking at the moon, the people in Scandinavia saw this spilt water from the bucket so the splash of water from the buckets and the story that came behind where did the splash of water come from um is a beautiful one with incorporating jack jack and jill and the man that carries the moon across the sky each night because we see the moon um at night and then we don't see it during the day and so on so i love the idea of the thought that there is somebody crossing the moon so I just think it's such a beautiful way to describe it. At the end of this, I want you to look back on all of the different countries and really think about which one is your favorite. Um, was it the one from Peru? Was it the one from China? Scandinavia? Or let's have a look at Australia. So Australia, and I've included a little picture here for you to sort of imagine, because remember this lesson is also all about using your imagination. Storytelling is crucial if you, for you to use your imagination. Um, and that's why I love it. It's so beautiful and it encourages all of you to use your imagination. So this one is called Blue the Moon. Okay. I always think of Baloo the bear from the Jungle Book. So those of you that have seen the Jungle Book, Baloo. Okay. Back in the dream time, Baloo, which was the moon's name, Baloo visited the earth and saw two young women who invited him to ride in their canoe. He was unsteady in the little craft and fell into the water. Embarrassed by his clumsiness, he hid. Although he now shines brightly every month, he remembers this little accident and shrinks away to gather his courage. OK, 
Can you find the embarrassed blue in the full moon? Okay, so also a very cute one, an embarrassed blue that and he was so he was so shy and embarrassed because he fell into the water and so that's why he comes out at night the moon comes out at night and doesn't stay there all the time and because he was so embarrassed he then disappears and retreats during the day so that we don't see him so also such a cute concept to explain the moon um and the story behind why the moon comes out and so on and that was from australia so is australia's story of the moon one of your favorites or it could be from New Zealand. So this story is called Moon Woman. Okay. The Maori call the woman in the moon Rona. On a moonlit night, she was returning from a stream with a calabash full of water. Moon slipped behind a cloud for a moment. And in the darkness, Rona stumbled on the root of a tree. So she tripped over the root of a tree. Angry, she cursed Moon. Moon, who would not stand for this abuse, swooped down on her and carried her off along with her water, God and the tree that had tripped her. The Maori still see all three there today. Can you? Okay. So you can see from the picture this lady carrying her... um carrying her water in a calabash. A calabash is almost like a container. Um, and she tripped over the root of a tree and she blamed the moon. Right. And so what happened, the moon was like, mm -mm, I'm not taking this blame. And so the moon carried her off. Um, and now they say that they can still see her with her calabash if you look at the face of the moon. Okay, very interesting. The next story is also funny enough called Moon Woman, but it is from Polynesia. Have you ever seen a rainbow at night formed by moonlight instead of sunlight? And I, that's a question I'm asking you. Have you ever, maybe you have seen a rainbow formed by the moonlight instead of the sunlight? Legend has it that Hina, Polynesian woman who was on her way to get some fresh water did. She saw it. She had always wanted to live in the heavens. So she walked along the rainbow and didn't stop until she reached the moon, almost like a little path. She lives there now and can be seen beating her tapper board to make cloth. Can you find her? So she, the story has it from Polynesia that this Polyne Polynesian woman uh, found this moonlit rainbow and jumped on top of this rainbow and walked this rainbow until she reached the moon. And if you look at the face of the moon, apparently you can still see her and see where she is in the moon. Okay, can, can you see her? Right. And then we have Mexico. So this story is called rabbit moon in ancient times an aztec god chose to set himself on fire and jump into the sky to light the cold dark world he became the sun a second god jealous of the praise that the new sun was getting did the same all of that light angered a third god who threw a rabbit at the second sun's face to dim his light making him the moon can you see the dark rabbit on the moon that that is such an awesome story so to have a story to explain well we get the sun and we get the moon because one of the gods put himself a uh, set himself a light jumped into the sky and was now the sun and then there was another one that decided mm, i also want to be a sun and be glorious so I'm going to do the same. Then there were two sons. Then there was a third God that was like, no ways. That is not okay. And so what happened? Through a rabbit. Why a rabbit? I don't know. But it comes from Mexico. So there must be some significance. Through a rabbit at that second um, sun and dimmed the light. And so became the moon. So the moon was is still lit. And remember, we only see the moon because it is a reflection of the sun. Okay. 
very interesting story. Okay, and so grade fours, I hope that you have enjoyed this lesson. It was a fun lesson. And which story was your favorite? I know I have my favorites. And which story is yours? And I want to ask you a question. If you look up at the moon or you see a picture of the moon, do you see an image? Do you see a person? Do you see an animal? What do you see when you look up at the moon? Just like you would when you look up at the clouds in the sky and you look at those clouds and you see, oh, I see a rabbit. I see this. I see that. And so what do you see? What story would go with that image that you see? So be as creative as you want. Use your imagination and it's fun. So boys and girls, hope you've enjoyed this lesson. It was really cool. I love storytelling because it just takes us to a place of imagination and creativity and just fun so until next time have a wonderful day from me miss kun hakun na matata and be kind to one another bye